But buried beneath their confusion, there seems to be this deep yearning, this, this longing, this holy hunger. It, intertwined with their skeptic, skepticism is their hope, their hope and their need, their longing for God to be truly present in their lives. They are beside themselves with anxiety, distracted by their own expectations of what lies ahead, of how things should be. The main problem express, expressed by these two disciples is the loss of hope. If you look at that verse 21, they say, but we had hoped, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Hope in the past tense that they were hoping. They kept hoping in the past. And the crucifixion of Jesus was a loss of that hope for them. But the resurrection of Jesus restored that hope. Amen. He is no longer dead. However, it's not just the appearance of the risen Jesus that changed them. That was not enough to restore their faith and hope. They didn't even know who he was at first. On a Sunday morning in Trenton, as in Forked River, and all over this land, modern would-be disciples come straggling through the church doors, weighed down by cynicism, stress, stress, pretense, power. They are sophisticated business people, skeptical parents, shell-shocked teachers, nurses, and others, skilled practitioners in the ways of the world, but nervous novices in the things of the Spirit. They, like the first disciples, yearn for the living presence of God, but they are too preoccupied, too suspicious, too busy to actually recognize God who was right there in their objective flat world of truth and matter and money and mortgages and deadlines. The church's world of mystery and meaning and risk and relationship seems silly. And so they're eager to discuss and debate the ideas of God, but unprepared to experience or recognize the presence of this God. They do not recognize that it will be only through pounding hearts and burning hearts that they will come to believe, that they will recognize Jesus. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along life's pilgrim journey. I long for Jesus. I long for Jesus to walk with me. Like Pastor Karen, we both grew up in the Pentecostal church. Assemblies of God. I think she's retained more of her Pentecostalism than I have, but it's there buried in me still. But Karen and I know the, the story of exclusivity that we experienced in growing up in, in that tradition. And we can trace the, the movements of, of our lives and our journey and how our hearts became increasingly open to others first conversation I think that I had with another person who wasn't Pente I thought the whole world spoke in tongues and was Pentecostal I mean as a child right I mean that's all you know and eventually I met a Methodist <laughs> Lord have mercy a Methodist and my eyes opened a little bit more and then down the road I met a Presbyterian <laughs> Lord how my eyes opened to that stranger actually you can't get any stranger than a Pentecostal when it comes right down to it and then I met Catholics, I met rich people, I met poor people, I met straight people, I met gay people, I met other people, and my eyes began to be open in the presence of the stranger. And there I met Jesus. Angels, through these angels, these messengers of God, I was able to let go of my little Jesus and allow the resurrected Jesus to pull me into God's future, which is one of hospitality and inclusivity, and universality. That's how big God's love is. Amen. Stranger on the road to Emmaus took the skepticism and the curiosity of the disciples and wove them into the fabric of Scripture, the intersection of the story of Scripture with the immediacy of his own flesh, 
lit a fire in the hearts of those who traveled with him. Finally, it was when they broke bread. I can't wait for lunch. Because there's when it really happens. When you break bread together. Their eyes were opened and they recognized who he was. We need to break bread together. We need to be together, spend time together. They recognize the presence of the resurrected God in their midst. Such heartfelt faith is echoed in words from Acts when Peter describes the agony and the cruelty of Christ's death to that, that Pentecost crowd gathered around. The listeners are cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. It wasn't a rational thing that happened there. They were cut to the heart. Where, where are we really truly moved? Here? It's here. They became believers. They became those who gave their heart to the holy. And the exuberance of the church is unleashed. Later in the epistle lessons, we learn that in the extended church of that Greek world, the tradition of the resurrected Lord continues to live in joy and obedience. The people love one another deeply from the head. No. Deeply from the heart. Again and again and again in Scripture, pounding hearts, burning hearts, become loving hearts. And so the heart of God continues to beat as we sing. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along life's pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. And that's what our journey's about together. Westminster Presbyterian Church and Fork River Presbyterian Church are on a journey together. Amen. Because we need to get out of our own little worlds. We need to encounter the other, and in that encounter, discover Jesus again for the first time. So we are so looking forward to more steps along this journey. Do we know where it's going to lead? No, that would spoil it, <laughs> right? But we know already that we've experienced the movements of God in our lives. And so we're, uh, plan one of the, the things that we're planning is a retreat with our two churches up at Camp Johnsonburg in October. And there's going to be other things. I can't see this relationship just ending at that point, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds in the future. Okay.